Hey guys, it's MJ the Student Act Tree and we're talking CT5 Chapter 10 which is Competing Risks and I thought what I'm going to do is just give you a video um, that's an overview of what you can expect in this chapter. I find this chapter, the material is quite difficult to understand but the exam questions are rather easy. So if you learn your formulas and you understand this work, you can almost count on these questions being bank marks that you very easily get. So without further ado, um, these are all the different topics that we're going to be running through in this video. Um, the first thing is this thing known as income protection. And this is an annuity that pays out not when someone dies, which is what we've been dealing with, but rather when someone becomes sick. And so sickness is this new state that we introduce. We're also also going to introduce a state known as retirement and withdrawal and we can add up as many of these other states and these are known as multiple decrements. So before we've just been dealing with death but now we've introduced these other ones. And because we've introduced more states we have to upgrade our notation. So you'll see the notation now indicates from what state so this is like a little model you'll use with your different states and those are your transitions. So you'll have the starting state to your finishing up state and the age. If there's a bar across, it means that you stay in that state and you don't jump around. Um, I've got a little example. Feel free to pause. And there's the solution. If you want to do that quickly. Um, there's also this thing known as the Kolmogorov forward differential equation, which is rather intimidating. But if you've done subject CT4, it should be, you know, this is a much more tamed version, so it's going to be easier. Um, yeah, the exam questions they have asked on this stuff, but it has been quite easy. But yeah, you can see here's the, the classic model. You can go from healthy to sick, and you can recover, and from both states you can die where you stay dead. Unless you're Jesus, then you can come back to life. But anyway, moving on, um, you can see... These are just a little bit of the mathematics behind it, um, but don't get too bogged down with, with Komogorov, because like I said, the exam questions are rather straightforward, so just do some past papers. Um, this guy's quite interesting. What it is, it's a new notation, and this is saying this is a dependent uh, probability, and the A lets you know that there are other decrements, so you can see it's dependent probability. The symbol Q shows that it's a decrement that you're leaving the population. X refers to the person's age and alpha re refers to the specific decrement. So you can see this is that standard uh, model again but this time sickness is changed with retired. You can't go from retired back to active and this just makes the maths a little bit simpler. So you have your dependent probabilities and your independent probabilities and you can just read a little bit more about them. Um, then also in this chapter there's these things known as differential equations and they're not as intimidating as they look they actually make a lot of sense. Um, I don't know if I should quickly talk you guys through it but essentially what this is saying this TAQ um, RX is saying that Someone, this is the dependent probability that someone retires. So the first part over here, well actually I've got it written much better over here, uh, we'll do it for the deaths, is you can break this up into two sections. Okay, the first um, section is saying that, that if a decrement is to happen, the probability that it's that decrement, it's the transition divided by all the other transitions or otherwise known as force from state I to J, divided by total forces. And then you have the probability that a decrement actually is going to happen. So it is rather straightforward. Um, I don't know if I've explained it that well, but I do want to keep moving because I want to get the whole of chapter 10 within one video. Um, and there's some more important stuff we need to talk about. These formulas... Um, I would, yeah, I'd recommend you learn them, be comfortable with them, because if you know these formulas, 
the questions actually become very straightforward. You just have to plug in the values that they give you, convert them into one of these, and then convert them back to something else. Yeah, like I said, it is quite straightforward. Um, this is just talking about how you can express independent probabilities as transition rates, and this one is how you can express transition rates as independent probabilities. And yeah, this one here is transition rates as dependent probabilities. So remember, you have your transition, um, your transitions, or otherwise known as your forces, and that's these guys here. You've got your dependent probabilities, which is the AQ, and then you have your independent probabilities, which is missing the A, and it's just the Q. Um, then there's the linking assumption. I mean, you can pause, you can read through what I've written there. Uh, total force, that should make quite a lot of sense. Then um, one thing that you do do a lot in these exams is you construct a multiple decrement table. And this, okay, the example will never be as easy as this one where you just multiply the probabilities by the population and subtract them. What you're most likely going to get is a multiple decrement table. And then they're going to tell you that an adjustment has been made and that the independent probability has reduced by 80% or something like that. Um, then it's a little bit more trickier, and I've actually written out here the different steps. Hold on, I just need to I need to adjust my computer so that you can actually see them. Uh, here we go. Okay, so constructing a multiple decrement table after a change has been made, there are five steps, and the first step is to calculate your dependent probabilities then you use your dependent probabilities to calculate your independent probabilities. So this relationship here is very important. Then step three is quite easy. You adjust your independent probability. In this case, we've uh, made it 75% of its original value. We then recalculate the dependent probabilities. This is another formula that's very important to know. And then you reconstruct the table. And I mean, this can give you seven marks in the exam. So it's really easy if you just learn these five steps. And these are the two big formulas that you need to be comfortable with. And yeah, other than that, that's basically chapter 10. Um, if you are struggling with anything specific in this chapter, feel free to ask a question in the comment section below, and I will do my best to answer it. But otherwise, yeah, this has been just a, a general overview and I would highly recommend that you guys buy those flashcards um, from the ActEd website and they've also got some other cool study resources for you there. But yeah, happy studying guys and all the best. Cheers.